So this is my makeshift ultrasonic cleaner. This is the lens off of Thomas's camera. It's, you can kind of tell in there, you can see all that junk is on the inside of the lens. And it's actually way worse. If I shine some light on the back of it, uh, you can it'll shine through and you can actually see how bad it was. I tried soaking this in alcohol, 91% uh, alcohol, and it got me to this point. There used to be right in the middle of that lens a big water drop uh, from when it fell in the uh, spring. So now that I got that out, I still have all this other gunk that I can't seem to get out. So there's also this thing back here that kind of looks like a sensor. I don't know if it has something to do with the autofocus, but you can see here. Oh uh, yeah, it's kind of gunk up in there in the middle. So, oh, hold on, dryer just started. Okay. So, my thought was, well, we can put it in, you know, some sort of stronger uh, bath. I even tried using soapy water, which helped a lot, actually. There was a... Once I got that center bubble out from the front lens, the one behind it had something that looked like... It's almost like, you know, when film gets melted because it's been in front of the lamp for too long, and it gets those weird bubbles. That's what it looked like on the lens uh, in the middle, the... I guess that middle element. So anyway, I thought, well, why don't we do an ultrasonic bath? Well, I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. And my thought was, why don't we try to make one? So I wanted to give it something that will vibrate, soak, vibrate, and then, you know, I don't know if it's the best position is to have it like that or what. But anyway, I have some distilled water, but now I need something to shake this thing. Obviously, it's not going to be ultrasonic because I don't have anything that can do the 40 kilohertz or so that uh, an ultrasonic transducer could generate. So, I made my own transducer. Don't mind the uh, ghetto setup here. This um, is just a weight off balance on a little electric motor that Thomas was so uh, just so happy to share for a project. So, I have it wired up to this board that I made, this little uh, mini lab that I made back in ooh, 2000 and, had to be 2002, 2003, back when I was going to school. And I used it for projects at school, but I've never used it since. It's been sitting, I've been carrying with it, me, I've been carrying it with me for years, and I've, I've done zero projects with this. So might as well take it out now. Anyway, so in my box, uh, I have some material. Some packing material to kind of help uh, absorb the vibration. I don't want this thing to go anywhere and keep it upright. Uh, I have these extra uh, dead, uh, these lead acid batteries that are dead, so they'll just add the extra weight. I'm going to use some hot glue, and I'm going to uh, glue this thing onto the side of it, fill it up, and then see how it works. So I'm going to put the camera down so I can do that. Okay, so a bit of a change in plan. Uh, this was getting, uh, it was bumping up against the side of the cup, so it wasn't going to work. So I just hot glued this socket. To that and then this obviously to that and now I'm gonna try to fit it in there and hopefully it will sit properly and I can power it up so we'll see all right now that she's in there let's give her a little bit of juice and see see how well it works Meter out to see exactly how much voltage I'm getting. So I'm My hope <laughs> is that that weight doesn't come flying off. I think it's on there pretty good. Um, you can see. Quite a bit. What I'm just hoping to avoid with this is that it doesn't rub up against the side and you know two harder surfaces up against each other. So. Let's see about making this a little bit deeper. I gotta extend the lens again. Hold on, let's see if I can do it with one hand. Nope, hold on. I extended the lens out a little more. Uh, I'm not really worried too much about larger debris coming out of this and then getting mixed up in there because uh, I think that would be easier to clean out than just all that gunk. So let's go ahead and put some distilled water in it. Just run 
now. So water. And just fill it up until it's completely submerged. Hopefully it's not going to splash out. Might have to rethink that cloth in there. Now she's completely submerged, just distilled water. I'm not going to add anything to it just yet. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Huh. There's the first problem. It's exciting the washcloth to push it up. I'm not sure what happened there. My phone just shut off. Well, my phone just shut off for some reason, but a bit of vibration there. I'm hoping those things aren't going to knock themselves loose, but I mean that should be that should be sufficient. Um, I think that cloth is just a little too high, but. Let's just see what it looks like after a few seconds. I can't really see any other, other debris in there. Yeah, that's still pretty gunked up. So I'm gonna let this run overnight. Let's see if it makes it, ooh yeah, you can see how bad it is back there. Let's uh, put that in a little deeper, and we'll give it some more juice. I want to probably try. Let's try to get it right before it starts splashing out of here. was short-lived I didn't even think about that but all that vibration wiggled the uh, the little metal flap right out of the, uh, just broke it right off so not gonna be able to use that I didn't even didn't even realize it I'm gonna need a more robust motor all right let me see what I can find all right this is what else I can come up with so quickly you can see there, I glued the weight that was on the other motor uh, to the hub. Um, I could have maybe glued it to one of the fins. This fan has a broken fin on it anyway, so I put the extra weight on where the broken fin was, so it kind of minimized the weight now that it's trying to compensate for the missing fin. However, I didn't want to blow the bearing out in this thing. So right now you can see the leads are way far away. Uh, that shouldn't be, a, uh, the vibration shouldn't be a problem with that anymore. And I don't get the amount of vibration that, that I did with the motor, but I mean, I can see it. I couldn't tell you what frequency it is. I tuned this thing to 12 volts um, because that's what the fan's rated at, so I know I'm not going to be overdriving it. And hopefully that little bit of extra vibration is not going to mess with uh, the bearing too much. Um, I did hot glue it to the top of the fan and hopefully that'll keep it stable. The paper will keep the fan from driving around, uh, bouncing around, so you can see those particles just swimming away in there. And I, I figured as much since there was going to be some lint from the, uh, the cloth, but again that's not really, I, I mean I can do this multiple times to get that out. So. Um, and the goal is to clean those lenses, so we'll let this run overnight and hopefully get some good results tomorrow. Alright, so finally I decided that I'm going to have to change my tactics. The original fan that I had, this guy, these connectors um, weakened the solder points I think 
And so now this thing doesn't even turn on. You have to wiggle it and it doesn't stay on. Anyway, and then I thought, okay, we'll do another fan. Put a couple of weights, make it offside, uh, offsided. Still doesn't work. This one, it vibrates so hard that it actually pushes it up. Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh. So this has been sitting in, come on, focus. This has been sitting in, uh, what is that water? I can't think of that right now. Distilled water, that's what it was, and body wash. And it's gotten cloudy. That's not good. I don't know where that cloudiness came from. But anyway, we gotta check that out. So this is, uh, I mean, this is going on, what, two weeks now? I've been trying to do different things. Anyway, long story short, the homemade remedy is just not working out. So, next step, our friends at Goodwill. Made a quick trip the other day, and they had this. Now, what I find funny about this, I realized this after I picked it up. It says Gemsonic Jewelry Cleaner, right? Cleans electrosonically. What does that mean? Electrosonically. You can see it's got some age to it. This thing's probably been in a box in someone's house for a long time. Because it looks like it may not have ever been used. Don't know. Um... Anyway, the, the whatever that stuff is, I think started to evaporate. Oh yeah, look at that foot. That's not the right foot. Oh well, doesn't matter. I'm gonna clean this up. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty clean, but I'm just gonna rinse out all that stuff because I don't know what that is. I don't want anything scratching the lenses. And it comes with that, but that doesn't look like I would really wanna use it. So. I'm just going to make my own concoction. I'm going to clean things up a little bit, and then I'm going to get this all set up. All right, so I gave it a little bit of bath here. Uh, I put a drop of uh, body wash, and if you look on the bottom, with that foot missing, it does lean to one side, and so the edge does um, touch the table. There you go. So, I don't know, I just found this uh, Lego wheel, and it looks like it, uh, I don't know, that's a pretty good job of keeping it somewhat level. So, let's see about, I'm debating whether or not I want to put uh, something like cloth down. Because what I really don't want to have happen is that, ooh, that was not a good idea. Um, you know, the vibrations end up scratching it. So, the last cloth that was in there, oh my goodness, it smelled so bad. Like there were chunks of things in there. I don't know if the body wash started to break down and clump into other things, uh, but it was gross and it smells really bad. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that, but yeah, I don't know. Either maybe in this tray, I probably shouldn't have squirted it on there without deciding first, but uh, anyway, well, let's actually fill it up with water and see what it does. You can see here. Okay, let me get some of our distilled water. Okay, let's turn it on. Oh. Looks good. So yeah, thinking I'm gonna get. So you would think it would pretty much uh, vibrate that stuff off. Hmm. Let's see. Well, it's definitely light. You know, you could put a decent sensation in your finger, but it's not like it hurts. Hmm. Interesting enough, that part. That's pretty cool. Alright, well, I'm going to find a small cloth or something that I could put in there that's not going to leave too much lint in the water. And we'll go from there. And I decided to put the uh, paper towel in there because I really don't have anything else I could use, but it did significantly dampen the, uh, the wave effect. And just to give you a good idea of where we're at so far, this is where soaking in uh, body wash is done. 
So you can see a lot of the larger um, issues are gone. And now it's just a matter of just clearing up those little thick droplets you can see there. And of course this back lens is like super foggy. But they cleared up when I, when I dried it. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's really going to affect it. I'm going to let it soak for a while. But you can see already all that lint flying around. It's not what I wanted to have happen, but I don't know. We'll start from there. We can always rinse it and get all that stuff out anyway. So. All right, so I'm finally going to sit down to fix Thomas's camera. These are all the pieces. Everything is in working order except I could not clean this assembly to save my life. So I ended up buying this off of eBay. It's supposed to be a genuine uh, Sony part, but I don't know if that's true or not. But it looks pretty clean. That lens there, and I checked the front, that looks pretty good. So here's the actual CMOS, the image sensor there. And this is the housing, the old one. You can see how many individual pieces there were. Uh, it was a nightmare. I have a good idea where everything goes, except there's a little white piece in here, this guy. I don't know where that goes. That was just, when I took it apart, uh, I started flipping it side to side, trying to look around, and I saw that sitting there on the table. So, we'll see. But right now, I'm gonna clean off the sensor with some scotch tape to make sure there's no particles on top and then we'll start putting it together. what this part is for. I couldn't find out where. <laughs> Obviously it comes from the camera, but I didn't, I, yeah, I don't really know where. Um, now that I think about it, I thought there was a, th a mechanism that kept the, um, the battery from going in the wrong way. See, the contacts are on this side, but you can put the battery in this way. Uh, so it won't really snap in place, but uh, but yeah, she's back together. This was the old one. I think this one. Well, the reason it's this color is, uh, well, you can see uh, the inside. I could never really get it clean, and I dipped it in a bath of uh, Windex, and within an hour, it just stripped away the the coating. So. It's not quite the same color, but functionality is what's key, and it works. Let's see. It zooms pretty quick. One thing I notice is the, uh, maybe it's the mode that I'm in. I don't think I'm on auto. Focus. Uh, focus is having a little trouble there. But then I am, you know, pretty close. Yeah, it's having a little trouble with the focus. Hmm. And well, that seems okay. I don't remember how this thing performed. Let's say I want to zoom in on that. Well, I can't. How about that over there? Nope. How about that over there? Ah, the very far back. Airplane on the table. Not so much. Huh. I'll play with the modes. It's probably the mode that I'm in screwing it up, but anyway, she's back together. 
<laughs> All right.